Hi everyone. This presentation will introduce you to concepts of client server architecture. These concepts are important since integrative programming will be dealing with applications that are designed at least in this kind of structure client server architecture so uh, what is client server architecture oh, in this presentation we look at client server architecture in two perspectives in the network perspective it is a network architecture in which each computer or process on the network is either a client or a server in the application perspective particularly on distributed applications in this architecture the tasks or what we call workloads are partitioned between providers of a resource or service or the servers and service requesters or clients we have three basic components in this architecture the clients servers and communication networks clients are applications that run on computers they rely on servers for different resources such as files devices and processing power so a client does not share any of its resources but it requests content or service from a server so an example is the simple email client so it is an application that enables you to send and receive email generally clients are applications servers are computers or processes that manage network resources for instance for disk drives we have file servers for printers we have print servers for managing network traffic we have network servers for managing data we have database servers and uh, for managing applications or programs we have application servers so uh, in distributed computing a server host runs one or more server programs which share the resources with clients so the sharing of resources by a server constitutes what we call a service so a service is the abstraction of computer resources a shared resource may be any of the server computers software and hardware components from programs and data to processors and storage devices in the client server architecture setup a client does not have to be concerned with how the server performs in fulfilling the request and delivering response the client only has to understand the response based on the well-known application protocol that is the content and formatting of the data for the requested service ito yung mga examples natin ng tinatawag nating servers we classify servers by the service they provide for instance here uh, application servers serve applications or programs or file servers serve computer files as well as for instance web servers serve web pages or for instance proxy servers provide or serve proxy service so uh, the client server 
characteristic describes the relationship of cooperating programs in an application. So the role of the server is to provide a function or service to one or many clients, or that is what we call response. Ang role naman itong clients ay to initiate request for services. So whether a computer is a client, a server, or both, parayong server at client, is determined by the nature of the application that requires the service functions. So, ang halimbawa natin dito, we have a single computer that can run a web server and file server software at the same time. Since this computer is running two different servers, it can serve different data to clients that are making different kinds of service requests. Networks connect clients and servers. Computers and other devices in the network are called host. So often, ang clients at servers communicate over a computer network on separate hardware. But both client and server may reside on the same system. A client software can communicate with a server software within the same computer. So there is this extension of the client-server model in which data are exchanged directly between servers. We call this inter-server. So it is a communication between servers such as, for instance, to synchronize data between them. In the client-server architecture, there is what we call the request and response messaging pattern among the components involved, particularly yung server and client. So the client sends a request and a server returns a response. So we call that inter-process communication. Such communication must follow a communication protocol. So the request response or request reply is one of the basic methods computer use to communicate with each other in a network. So to communicate, computers must have a common language and they must follow rules so that both your client and server know what to expect. So this language and rules of communication are defined in a communication protocol. Client-server protocols operate in the application layer. So the application layer is an abstraction layer that specifies the shared communication protocols and interface methods used by host in a communication network. So we look at applications modeled in a client-server architecture. An application is modeled as a set of services that are provided by servers in a set of clients that use these services. So the, the, the applications are usually divided into logical chunks, which we call as tier. Most common is a three-tiered application. In a three-tiered application, we have three layers. The presentation, the application layer, or we call application logic, and the storage layer. So these layers are developed and maintained 
as independent modules on separate platforms. So the presentation layer is the topmost layer and we call that the user interface layer. Whereas the application logic layer, which is the middle tier, is the functional business logic that controls the core functionality of the application. The storage layer houses the database servers where data is retrieved and stored. So the presentation layer is the front end of the application. And uh, ito yung nagsisilbing interface for end users to interact with the application. Yung uh, middle tier, the application logic, can actually be further subdivided into uh, sublevels or sub tiers. Hence, uh, there are architectures uh, more than this three tier architecture. We call those architectures N tiered architectures. So the storage layer is the bottom layer. Uh, this layer should be kept independent of application logic. The data in this tier is managed and accessed by database management softwares or systems such as SQL and Oracle. Clients can be classified as thin or thick clients. So a thin client is an application primarily designed to communicate with a server. So the features and resources are provided by a server. So a typical, a common example of a thin client application is a web browser. On the other hand, thick client is an application that implements its own features independent of a server. Thick clients can connect to a server, but they remain mostly functional when disconnected. So examples of these are the applications that we install on our devices that generally works even if we are offline or even if we are not connected to the network. We can compare the characteristics of thin versus thick clients. For instance, in terms of uh, uh, local resource consumption, thin clients use less disk storage, memory, and CPU or computing power. On the other hand, thick clients need more local resources. In terms of network use, the functionality of a thin client depends dun sa bilis ng internet connection or yung bilis ng tinatawag nating network connection. Yung thick client, uh, the functionality may work even with slow or kahit yung walang network connection. In terms of uh, data store, sa data storage naman, yung thin clients, uh, the data are typically stored on servers. But for thick clients, the data may be stored locally on where locally on the device where the application or where the client application is running. Web applications are typical implementations of client-server architecture. So web applications or web apps are programmed using a client-server model. So web apps run on web servers and they are accessed by a user through a web browser.
That's how typical web applications operate. Because of this, web applications are considered browser-based interface or browser applications. So an emerging strategy for software companies is to provide web access to software previously distributed as local applications. Looking back at the history of software distribution, we have this what we call off-the-shelf software, wherein software or an application is distributed as local applications to users or consumers. You download an application, install it locally on your device, on your computer. But today, there is this strategy for application software companies of providing web access to the software they develop. So a company which follows such strategy is known as an application service provider. Yung tinatawag natin mga ASPs. So ASPs provide computer-based services to a customer over a network. We have also this what we call as software as a service. So these are web applications that are modeled in cloud computing. Software as a service is a centrally hosted software and is licensed on a subscription basis. So this is also referred to as on-demand software and they are considered cloud computing model web applications. Itong mga web applications na ito, nagagamit sila, they are run on what we call the typical web paradigm. What is the typical web paradigm? When we use web applications, we move between, uh, when we access a functionality, we move between distinct pages with different URLs. However, there is this new approach of developing web applications, yung tinatawag nating single page application. So it is another approach introduced in which a current web page is dynamically written with new data from the web server instead of the default way of ang default way kasi kapag kailangan mo ng tinatawag nating new data kailangan i-refresh or reload yung yung web page in single page applications sa ganitong setup yung single page application uh, a web page yung current web page na naandyan na nakikita mo or they are dynamically written with new data from the web server without reloading the entire web page. Paano nagagawa yan? Diyan papasok ngayon yung tinatawag nating client-side scripting. Since we have a prevalent use of mobile devices, hence the development of mobile web applications or yung tinatawag nating mobile app. So these are applications designed for mobile devices such as smartphones, tablets, or even watches or smart watches. So some practical considerations when we are talking about mobile apps. Uh, yung tinatawag nating responsive web design. Ang halimbawa nito yung viewability of applications on smartphone screens. Then we have considering progressive web apps. Some characteristics para makonsider nating progressive web app ang isang application, web application, web applications that can work offline. Yung mga features na tinatawag nating push notification. 
yung sharing features wherein you can share a particular app or the content from that app. You can share those on other apps, sa mga social networking apps. Another practical consideration is whether you want to design native apps. For instance, apps that can run directly on a mobile device without a web browser. And ultimately, without internet connectivity. So hybrid apps utilize a hybrid framework that integrates a web application with a native app. So there are many features that are seen as beneficial in designing mobile apps. For instance, the ability to sync with other device apps or with the device functions, for instance, yung pwede nating isync yung app na yan dun sa device camera, uh, dun sa timer, o pwede nating isync dun sa ibang mga apps dun sa ating device. Yung tinatawag nating uh, cross-platform or cross-browser availability. Uh, the ease of installation, yun yung mga magagandang features na nakikita natin sa ating, uh, na pwede natin i-consider para sa ating mga mobile apps. Yung uh, tinatawag natin offline usage, the auto-updates, and uh, sharing features, and many more. So that's all guys. That ends our presentation.